Once an algorithmic solution to a problem exists, a computer can implement the algorithm faster, cheaper, and more accurately than any human being. But if the procedure is flawed, a computer will produce far more flawed answers than any human being. Remember, to err is human, to really mess things up takes a computer. So it is increasingly important to prove the validity of algorithms. Remember, an algorithm always terminates after a finite number of steps and always produces a solution or maybe indicates that no solution exists. Let's prove that PRM's algorithm finds a minimal weight spanning tree. So remember, Prim's algorithm adds edges to an existing tree where the added edge does not form a circuit and has a weight less than or equal to any other available edge. Since a tree on n vertices must have n minus 1 edges, Prim's algorithm must terminate after n minus 1 steps. Or does it? One potential problem is that we must make a choice of the available edges. This means that the process of deciding is also part of the algorithm. But it's conceivable a decision might take an arbitrarily long time and possibly require an infinite number of steps. So let's think about this. Since a graph on n vertices has at most n choose two edges, then choosing the least weight edge that does not produce a circuit requires examining at most n choose two edges, rejecting any that produce a cycle, and selecting the least weight edge among those remaining. Notice that introduces another decision. So can we decide if an edge produces a cycle in a finite number of steps? Uh, circuit, cycle, whatever. Suppose we have a graph with k vertices and k minus 1 edges. There are k choose 2 pairs of vertices. Consequently, there are a finite number of paths between any two vertices. So we can verify that no cycle exists by finding all paths between all pairs of vertices and showing that no pair of vertices has more than one path joining them. Notice at this point we're not making any decisions, so we'll definitely get an answer after a finite number of steps. How quickly we'll get an answer is a different question. We'll talk about that later. Since Prim's procedure eventually terminates and eventually produces a graph on n vertices with n minus 1 edges, then it produces a tree. But is it a minimal weight tree? So, suppose Prim's algorithm selects edges in the order. Consider the set M, which includes all minimal weight trees. Some of these trees may have edges in common with the tree generated by Prim's algorithm. Since Prim's algorithm selects the edges in some order, consider M the minimal weight tree that shares the first k edges with P. We say that M has the longest possible prefix of P. Note that at this point we don't have to worry about how we find M. It's sufficient to know that it exists. But it's good practice to ask yourself how you would find it, and so we note there are a finite number of collections of n-1 edges, so there are a finite number of trees, and we can go through them to find the minimal weight ones, that gets us our set, then go through these to find M, the set with longest prefix. So we have our tree generated by Prim's algorithm, and then we have M, where the first few edges are the same as those chosen by Prim's algorithm, but at some point we choose a different edge than what Prim's would have chosen. And then we have the last few edges that form our spanning tree, which might or might not be the same as those eventually chosen by Prim's algorithm. 
Now suppose we replace the edge we chose in M with the edge we would have chosen from Prim's algorithm, giving us a new graph T. We note that T must also be a spanning tree. That's because if we add in the edge from Prim's algorithm, we get a graph with n edges on n vertices, which must contain exactly one cycle. So if we remove an edge, we get a graph with n minus 1 edges on n vertices, which must be a tree. Since Prim's algorithm actually did add the edge ek plus 1 and not the edge e prime, we note that the weight must be less than or equal to the weight of e prime, since if the weight of e prime was less, Prim's algorithm would have added it instead of what was actually added. If the weights are equal, then T is also a minimal weight spanning tree. Because we replaced one edge in a minimal weight spanning tree with another edge with the same weight. Moreover, it would share the first k plus 1 edges with p, contradicting our definition of m as the minimal weight spanning tree with the longest prefix. And if the weight of the edge chosen by Prims is less, then T itself has a lesser weight than M, which was supposed to be minimal. Consequently, the minimal weight spanning tree that has the longest prefix of P is P itself. Note that this means there could be other minimal weight trees that have fewer edges in common with P, but they all have the same weight, so Prims leads to a minimal weight spanning tree.